Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Okay, so let us uh, conclude the, or uh, rather continue the discussion on compressible flows. So, from the beginning we have uh, discussed uh, one dimensional compressible flow, uh, then uh, normal shock and then we finished in the previous session the oblique shock. Now, there are few more um, uh, topics which I would like to touch upon like the um, Rayleigh flow and all these things and that pretty much is going to talk about I mean all the um, uh, fundamental stuff which we need in further uh, uh, cycle analysis all this. So, uh, this just to move ahead we will start with the Rayleigh flow equation. Um, so, this is one of the topic that uh, I would like to uh, discuss. Uh, Rayleigh flow equation. So, so this is also a steady 1D flow, 1D flow with heat transfer or so this is important. Okay. So, th thus uh, quite appropriate this kind of flow or appropriate to treat the flow in combustion chamber as a Rayleigh flow case because where the heat transfer takes place. Now, let us uh, put a um, sort of hand schematic to see how we can analyze this. Uh, let us say this is a one dimensional flow and we take in control volume between these two which is uh, station 1 and station 2. This is upstream. So, all your P 1, rho 1, u 1, h 1 and downstream you have P 2, rho 2, u 2, h 2 and uh, you can have Q 1 2. Okay. So, area is, uh, so this is an constant area duct. So, that is another thing that, so also there is no work exchange while the heat is added which is Q 1 2. Okay. So, that means heat goes inside that is the direction. So, we write down the governing equations. First thing that we will write down the continuity equation. So, again this is a constant area duct, one dimensional flow. So, mass flow rate would be rho 1 is A or in other way m dot by A is rho 1. So, we can write m dot is rho 1 u 1 equals to rho 2 u 2 right. Now, momentum equation where we write p 1 plus rho 1 u 1 square is P 2 plus uh, rho 2 U 2 square. So, these are already we have uh, derived the equations for steady one dimensional flow at the starting of the discussion on compressible flow equations. Now, they look pretty similar, the energy equation would be slightly different th that we can see H naught is H 2 plus. So, we can write u 2 square 
by 2 equals to h 1 plus q 1 2 which is h 1 plus square plus q 1 2. So, this is the portion of the added heat which uh, shows up here and uh, the last equation of state that we get is p 1 by rho 1 t 1 is p 2 by uh, rho 2 t 2. Um, now, for a perfect gas, for perfect gas, we rewrite the momentum equation like p 1 1 plus rho 1 u 1 square by uh, p 1 equals to p 2 into 1 plus rho 2 u 2 square by p 2. So, which will give us p 2 by p 1 equals to 1 plus gamma m 1 square 1 plus gamma m 2 square. So, that is an relationship that we get. Now, thus we can get similarly for temperature relations which are 1 plus gamma m 1 square by 1 plus gamma m 2 square which is m 2 square by m 1 square. Now, the relationship between static and stagnation temperature that still holds good. So, this is the relationship which if we use this relationship back in this equation what we can write that T naught 2 T naught 2 by T naught 1 is 1 plus gamma m 1 square by 1 plus gamma m 2 square. So, this is whole square into m 2 square by f 2 by m 1 square into 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 2 square by So, this there is a square. So, 1 minus plus gamma minus 1 by a bonds. So, that is a sort of an little bit messy relationship, but that follows the standard uh, uh, equations that one can use and uh, derive those uh, things. So, now that similar way one can uh, get the total pressure and the static density ratio. Uh, Let us say similarly the total pressure and static density ratio that can be expressed. So, the P naught 2 by P naught 1 this should be 1 plus gamma m 1 square by 1 plus gamma m 2 square which is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m 2 square gamma minus 1 by 2 m 1 square gamma by gamma minus 1. So, that is what you get for the uh, pressure stagnation pressure ratio and static density like rho 2 by rho 1 they would be written as m 1 by m 2 square into 1 plus gamma m 1 uh, sorry m 2 square by 1 plus gamma m 1 square. So, you get the static density ratio 2. Now, once you look at this, so there will be a here is the Mach number 1, this side it would be Mach number 2. So, the downstream Mach number which is Mach 2. So, the downstream 
Mach number that m 2 one can calculate like m 2 square which would be gamma minus 1 m 1 square plus 2 2 gamma m 1 square minus gamma minus 1. Now, all this relationship uh, this can be also kind of for the critical condition it can be reduced to all that thing. So, now at critical conditions what we can write that P by P star that would be gamma plus 1 by 1 plus gamma m square, then we have T by T star which would be m square gamma plus 1 whole square 1 plus gamma m square whole square. So, we are assuming m 1 is uh, the thing then similarly T naught by T naught star they should be 2 1 plus gamma m square by 1 plus gamma m square which is whole square into 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square and similarly p naught by p naught star this can be written 1 plus gamma by 1 plus gamma m square into 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square by gamma plus 1 by 2 which is gamma by gamma minus 1. And finally, the rho by rho star that is 1 plus gamma m square by 1 plus gamma which is m square. So, these are the condition that uh, you can obtain for Rayleigh equations. And just I would like to touch upon this thing the reason is that when we will be dealing with the compressor then um, the uh, I, sorry combustor the combustor uh, the flow field inside the combustor could be treated like that there where there would be flow with some sort of an heat addition. So, now some last uh, quick comments on some of the other uh, factors which would be important one is the we just talk about little bit of uh, uh, standard atmosphere. So, when we talk about the standard atmosphere, now we know when the flow or uh, for a fluid in rest without any shearing stresses, any elementary fluid element will be subjected to two types of forces. One is surface forces, which is due to pressure and that is uh, number 1 and number 2 body forces which is essentially the equal to the weight of the fluid element. So, that means uh, when we do the force balance, uh, so the force balance can give us this following relation that delta P is minus gamma k bar, where gamma is the specific here this gamma is written as the specific uh, weight of fluid. So, this is not the gamma of here and k bar is the unit vector in the 
positive vertical direction, which means this is opposite to the gravitational force and what we can then write gamma is rho g. So, thus what we will have del p by del x would be 0, del p by del y would be 0 and del p by del z would be minus gamma which is minus rho g. So, these first two derivatives here they show that the pressure does not depend on x or y. So, as we move from one point to another in a horizontal plane in a x y plane like this let us say x uh, y plane like this uh, then the pressure does not change. P only depends on z and uh, so this particular equation we can write in an ordinary differential equation like d p by d z is minus gamma is minus rho g. So, this is a fundamental equation when the fluid is at rest and can be used to determine the pressure change with elevation or height. And this particular equation this indicates that the pressure gradient is in pressure gradient is in vertical direction. Okay. So, and that is negative. So, that is a very important information that uh, this is when you go in the vertical directions that is where you feel the pressure gradient and that is also negative. So, which means the pressure actually decreases as we move upward. That means, uh, from the sea level as you go up the pressure actually decreases in a fluid which is at rest. Okay. Now, for the earth's atmosphere where the variation in heights are large or something on the order of thousands of feet or kilometer. So, we need to pay some attention here that how this uh, variation actually occur. Now, in doing that we can consider the air to be a perfect gas. Uh, perfect gas this can be considered ideal perfect gas rather. So, ideal perfect gas and also the equation of state p equals to what can be used. Then uh, and what we can write this d p by d z equals to g p by r t. So, this is using p equals to rho r t. So, if we separate the variables and integrate, so this would look like from p 1 to p 2 uh, which is going to be L o n p 2 by p 1 minus g by r z 1 to z 2 
dz by t. So, here this r g and r are assumed to be constant over a range of elevation. So, otherwise uh, they cannot be taken out of the integration and <coughs> do this integration. So, this actually provides the <coughs> variation of pressure in earth's atmosphere. Now, ideally one uh, would like to have a measurements of pressure versus altitude over specific range of altitude. So, measurements for a specific range of altitude. Uh, however, this kind of information is usually not available. So, thus a standard atmosphere has been determined and that can be used for the design of aircraft. Now, this was uh, this uh, concept of standard atmosphere this was uh, developed in 1920s and since then there are many US and international committees and organizations have pursued and developed such standard. But the currently accepted atmospheric uh, standard is the current one, current one is based on report published in 1962 and then later and then updated in 1976. So, which is so called US standard atmosphere. Okay. So, that is uh, sort of an idealized representation of the middle latitude with uh, year round mean condition of earth atmosphere. In that particular uh, chart what one can uh, see this is let us say minus 100, 80, 60, 40, 0, 20, uh, this is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, So, this is uh, altitude that is z in kilometer, uh, this is temperature in degree C. So, <coughs> up to certain range of this and this, so this is known as this is zone 1 and let us say this is zone 2. So, zone 1 is troposphere and zone 2 is stratosphere. So, the Somewhere the curve looks 
like this, then it goes like that and like this. So, this is at p equals to 1 0 1 1.3 k p a which is absolute at 15 degree c. This is at 11 kilometer p is roughly 22 point this is something at 20.1 kilometer 5 k p a this is 32.2 k m p is 0.9 kPa, 47.3 kilometer p is 0.1 kPa. So, that is the kind of variation with the altitude one can find. So, there are troposphere and stratosphere. So, what one can use the temperature variation like T is T A minus beta Z. So, T A is a temperature at sea level or let us say z 0 and beta is the sort of lapse rate a rate of change of temperature with height. Then you can find out now this particular equations if we use along with the previous equation. So, what we get that pressure is P A 1 minus beta Z by T A to the power Z by beta R. So, again P A is the absolute pressure at Z 0 and then one can find out now, for the atmospheric layer between 11 to 21 kilometer, so temperature has constant value, this is a isothermal conditions and then the again the pressure elevation relationship which we can write just P naught exponential minus Z Z by Z naught by R t naught. So, that is what one can use. So, p naught t naught z naught are the pressure, temperature and altitude of lower edge of the atmosphere and then in the higher edge one can find out. So, you can form a table like that. So, this is how one can see the essential parameters like this and this is where um, let us say this is 0, 20 degree, 40 degree, this is temperature, this is minus 20, minus 40 and altitude in some kilometers in this side. So, typically this is where your helicopter works, this is some low transport aircraft, this is somewhere above this is around somewhere 11 kilometer or something this is where the civilian aircraft and then top of that fighter. So, this is the typical picture and uh, if you see the uh, with the Mach number and the altitude. So, that is what the another envelope you will get this is Mach number which would be close to let us say 0 where there is a curve, then 1, then 2 and this is 15, 30, 2, 50 these are in altitude kilometer. So, low range here again your helicopter, piston engine, turbo propeller, then you get turbo fan, then military fighter, ramjet then commercial jet works between 65 to 80, then you have other uh, fighter jet which is. So, this is another envelope which you will get. So, one can see that the 
uh, this atmospheric variation with temperature and pressure which are also important for aircraft design. Yeah, this is also just to give you an idea because this would be sort of uh, required when we will do the analysis for the uh, cycle analysis of the performance analysis. So, we will uh, pretty much uh, complete some of the fundamental discussion on compressible flows and fluid mechanics. So, we will continue with the performance in the next session. Thank you.